Good morning, friends, and welcome to Saturday, November 5th. Our Baker starts us with, They'll know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day Saturday Scrib <laughs> Devotion is found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Derek Weber. And our scripture reading is 2 Thessalonians 2, 1-5 and 13-17. to As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered up together, to him we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God of our object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do you not remember what I told you about those things when I was still with you? And 13. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits for salvation through sanctification of the Spirit, through belief in the truth. For this purpose, he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm. Hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word or mouth or by our letter. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, Comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We've never done it that way. It's a threat or so it feels like to many church leaders. Or is it a warning or an incantation against change of any sort? Some have said that those are the last words of the institutional church. We've never done it that way. And yet it's not hard to understand the desire to cling to what has always been. There is security in sameness. There is comfort in familiarity. Indeed, there seems to be an inherent good in preservation. Paul tells the Thessalonians to hold fast to the traditions. And that seems to be a call to resist change, to keep doing the same things over and over. We like our traditions. They define us. We've been doing them since day one, and we say since the very beginning. But what are the traditions that Paul says to cling to? Are they indeed the practices that we have been doing since day one? Are Paul's traditions the behaviors, actions, and words that we have repeated since have, that we have learned the faith? Ritual is important, even now. 
Repeated actions can give us a sense of belonging and connection and understanding. We partake in the Lord's Supper again and again. Sometimes something profound shines through. Perhaps, however, what Paul is really trying to get to the Thessalonians is to consider it is not so much the doing, but the foundation. The tradition is the love that fosters the behaviors. That's what we stand firm on, then. Actions change by necessity. Words develop new meanings and understandings, but love that gives us birth to words and actions remains the same. So stand firm on that love. That's what been, has been with you since day one. Let us pray. O loving God, teach us to love even when it is hard, even when it takes effort, and strengthen us to hold fast to what makes us your church. Amen. Our closing hymn is Standing on the Promises. Thanks to you all.